class. Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about inequalities in one triangle. So let's start with the first theorem, which states if two sides of a triangle are not congruent, so this is for, for triangles with two sides that aren't congruent, then the largest angle lies opposite the longest side, and the smallest angle lies opposite the shortest side. So for example, Let's look at this diagram. Angle P is the largest angle. So if angle P is greater than angle R, so second largest, which is greater than angle Q, so the smallest angle would be angle Q, then if we look at the side across from angle P, across from the largest angle, we're going to get the largest side. So RQ would have to be greater than the side across from angle R, which is PQ, um, so let's see, oops, so I have these backwards, huh, <laughs> let's fix that, PQ, all right, which has to be greater than the side across from angle Q, the smallest angle, which is the side PR. All right, so that's what that first theorem tells us. Second theorem says that the measure of an exterior angle, so if we look at our diagram, angle one is an exterior angle, that's going to be greater than the measure of each of its remote interior angles. So if angle one is the exterior angle, the remote interior angles are P and R. Those are the ones that are not connected to our exterior angle. So what this theorem is saying is that angle one has to be greater than the measure of angle P, and it has to be greater than the measure of angle R. So pretty, pretty basic theorem, but that's that one. All right, next we have the triangle inequality theorem. So this says that the sum of the lengths of the two smaller sides of a triangle have to be greater than the length of the third side. So, um, so shortcut, if we look at, and actually the length of any two sides. So of two sides, it doesn't actually have to be just the length of the two smaller sides. Uh, it's the length of the two sides, any two sides of a triangle, uh, have to be greater than the third side. Um, but there's a shortcut. We don't have to do a whole bunch of work with these problems. Um, really, we just need to add the two smaller sides together and make sure they're greater than the largest side. So if we look at this diagram, we can see it looks like BC is the largest side here. So if we make this the largest, then AB, the measure of AB plus uh, AC would have to be greater than BC. If this is true, then we have a triangle. If it's not true, then it's actually not a triangle. The sides wouldn't be able to connect all the way. All right, so last piece here, we have a corollary from this triangle inequality theorem, which says given the lengths of the two sides of a triangle, the length of the third side has to be greater than the difference and less than the sum of the two sides. So if we're given the length of two sides of the triangle, say here I have two centimeters and four centimeters, I know that x is going to have to be greater than the sum two plus four, greater than, oh, I'm sorry, greater than the difference, <laughs> four minus two, of the other two sides, but it also has to be less than the sum of two plus four. So if we put that together, the side length x is going to have to be less than six centimeters, but greater than two centimeters in order for this triangle to form an actual triangle. If it's not in between two and six centimeters, then the sides aren't going to connect fully and it's not going to close into a triangle. All right, let's look at some, infer or some examples here. Given three lengths, determine whether they can be the sides of a triangle. So this is using our triangle inequality theorem. So we're going to take six plus seven, the two smaller sides, and we need to make sure that that's greater than the longest side. So six plus seven is 13, which is greater than 12, so yes, these three sides would form a triangle if we put them together. Now the next one, if I take my two smallest sides, five plus six, and put it greater than 12, well, is 11 greater than 12? No, it's not. So these three sides can't form a triangle. And the reason why, I know it's hard to, hard to understand unless you see it visually, if I have 12 inches here, and I put five inches here, 
and six inches here, if I try to bring those together, they're not going to be long enough to meet. And the only way they're long enough to meet to form a triangle, if I try to move these, these sides together and I try to move them together, they're not going to touch unless those two smaller sides are greater than the third side when you add them together. All right, uh, last one, we have what happens if we have 5 plus 7 and 12, so is 12 greater than 12? So will it meet if the two smaller sides add and equal the third side? Unfortunately, it won't. So this is going to be a no also. And the reason why, visually, if you have 12 on the bottom here, if this side is 12 and this side is 5 and this one is 7, they're only going to meet once they hit the very, very bottom. So they're not going to touch, they're not going to touch until they're absolutely horizontal. That's when they're going to touch, but that doesn't create a triangle. As soon as you lift them up, they're going to separate and you don't have a triangle if they're equal lengths there. All right, uh, let's look at our last couple examples. Assume a triangle has sides with the given lengths. What are the possible lengths for the third side? So here, this is where we use that corollary. I know that the length of the third side has to be less than the sum and greater than the difference. So if I take 13 plus 5 and 13 minus 5, it's kind of a little shortcut way to do your work here. X has to be less than 18 centimeters and greater than 8 centimeters in order for this triangle to work out. Now, uh, for B, we throw a little trick in here. Look at the units, feet and inches. Be really careful when you see these problems and make sure you're looking at your units and make sure they match. And if they don't, we need to make them match. Now, I uh, would rather avoid decimals, just like a lot of students like to avoid decimals. So I like to go my feet into inches instead of inches into feet. That way we don't have to deal with any decimals. So here we have, let's do 18 inches. And then two feet, if we multiply that by 12, is going to give us 24 inches. So my third side is going to have to be less than 18 plus 24 and uh, greater than 24 minus 18. So we have x has to be in between, let's see, that's 42. And we're in inches now, really important to remember your units. All right, and then 18, uh, 24 minus 18, that's going to be, well, six inches. All right, so kind of a big range there, but that's what we need to have happen. It needs to be greater than six inches, but less than 42. All right, and that wraps up our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.